If I go past 10 minutes, you make noises. <laughs> OK, let me see. So hello, my name is Marina Van Vuelen. I'm a professor at Bard College, and I'm the national director of the Bard Clemente course in the humanities, which I will talk about today. But first, I want to really thank Andy first for inviting me, because he likes some of my stories about the likes of Sean and, and, and other crazy things. And I'm really so grateful to Tigo. Tigo has helped um, so many initiatives at Bard, the veterans, the uh, low income. I mean, really, it's so extraordinary to have people like you to help the cause we believe in. So I, I'm going to talk to you about the Clemente course, but I want to talk to you really today about how literature, philosophy, art history has truly changed the lives of these low-income students that I teach and that I've been teaching for over 20 years. And, and the story starts, my story, my relationship with Clemente, my relationship with Bard College actually starts in, at Columbia when I was a professor there and I was teaching the very course you are describing, the literature humanities, and we were teaching Oedipus. And it was, I remember, it was 5 to 12. And um, the students had just read um, that Oedipus had slept with his mother, killed his father, and was about to, to yoke his eyes out. And then the, 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 it's ri something rings, and they start getting up to go to lunch. <laughs> and I just looked at them, and I said, could you please close your eyes and imagine that you've slept with your mother? Are you really going to go to lunch after that? <laughs> and they sat down, but it was, in a way, it was, it was a wake-up call to me. Would, did I do something wrong? What kind of teacher am I that I am so not evocative that they're <laughs> actually going to have bad cafeteria food rather than pondering the miracle of Sophocles? <laughs> so by pure chance, that night I was doing my laundry, which didn't happen very often because I was a busy assistant professor so, and French, so, you know. Um, <laughs> so, so, so I, 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 and I found this publication, um, Harper's and this guy, um, Earl Shores, who had started something called the Clemente Course and uh, that was accredited by Bard College, and it was about teaching philosophy, literature, art history, American history writing to low-income people. And... Um, it just suddenly, it called to me. I, I thought, well, maybe there's a different kind of hunger that is maybe not the hunger that I saw today at, at noon, but a, a different kind of hunger that I am also eager to, um, to tap into. So um, my, my, my colleagues at Columbia were very cross because I said, I, I have to leave Columbia. I want to go to Bard. I want to, um, I want to teach this Clemente course and, and so I go to Bard and I, I discover um, kind of the opposite of the problem. What happens when students who have not had an education, so many of them, not just from low income, many of our students live in shelters, many of our students are, um, you know, in the process of being, uh, weaning themselves from, from, from drugs, many of them are, are, are in hiding because they are, they, they have been, you know, they're, they're basically, the violence in their own homes have made them go into hiding. So finally, um, the classes I started to teach, the commitment, the hunger, the, the identification was so strong. And I, I, that's what I want to talk to you about today. How is it possible that people can still, in a world where the humanities are obviously under threat, and we know that is true, how come there is such a transformation that is possible when we teach certain works of literature, if we teach them in a certain way? And so um, to, to, to do the, the kind of the opposite of the Oedipus, um, incest experience. I was teaching Antigone, and uh, this was in Kingston, New York. I also taught the Clemente in Poughkeepsie, in, in Boston, Dorchester, so I, I, I always experienced the same kind of amazing 
just uh, the energy, the, the, the desire to, to understand their lives through literature. But we were doing Antigone, and I was trying to explain, you know, Jocasta, Creon, the, the, the Oedipus, uh, the, uh, the, how incest was one of the structuring elements of the story. And one student burst into tears and left, and she came back and she says, Okay, this is literature. I have to learn through literature how to absorb and understand what happened to me. So it was, <laughs> I never thought about incest in that way when I was teaching literature. So suddenly, all these elements that were abstract to me, even with my self-righteous, how can I stay in a place where people go to lunch instead of thinking about it? Um, suddenly, I, I was just, I, 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 I was shocked by the power of these texts to bring together literature and life. And um, another episode, which I love so much, and I think Andy heard this, and this is probably why he invited me today, but I, I, I had a, a wonderful student who, a very strange man. He had an enormous head. He and he so no, but he he was just this amazing giant. And and so he 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 would come to class and and he still comes to all the Clemente courses. He's been it's only a one year class, but he's been coming every year for six years, and he just wants more. But he um, wrote me a, a, an email and he said, I can't believe we're doing Billy Budd. I've always wanted to do Melville, and uh, I can't wait for our class. So. So I was so happy because I love Billy Budd and I wanted to know what they thought and we had just done Kant and how... And so the class starts and he's not there and I'm thinking this is unbelievable. He's never missed a class in his whole life. So finally another student gets a text and she says, Peter is in the hospital, he just had a heart attack. And, and so we were unbelievably concerned. So we go to the hospital after the class, the three of us, and there was Peter, very, very pale, with a, a mask, a oxygen mask on his face with, you know, oxygen. And, every, and he saw me and he pulled off the oxygen mask and he said, what happened with <laughs> Billy Budd? <laughs> well, how did people like Billy Budd? <laughs> and I understood at that moment that the real oxygen for Peter and for the likes of Peter were these works of literature, just as when we were doing Kant. I mean, Kant, really? I mean, uh, it's not exactly, you know, what is going to keep us awake at night, although that's not true. Kant keeps us awake <laughs> at night. And, and I, I was trying to explain the categorical imperative, and suddenly a student says, oh, yes, I know all about the categorical imperative. And this was someone, you know, first generation, had never gone to college, had barely uh, finished high school. He says, oh, every time I do recycling, I, I guess I <laughs> practice the categorical imperative because only I know whether I'm going to put the things in the right bins. <laughs> only I know <laughs> what cheating is because no one's ever going to check. And those stories um, happen again and again in, in the Clemente course, but also in any course that, um, that puts the, the humanities. Why are they called the humanities? Let's remember why we believe in these courses. Or when I taught um, Plato's Republic and we come to the book 10 of the Republic and um, you know, who, I asked, who would you like to meet in the afterlife? Who would, who, who would you like to be in the afterlife? And one of the students who had just taken the Clemente art history class said, well, I want to go and live in Monet's studio and just spend my whole life looking at Monet painting his water lilies. And, you know, this didn't sound trite. This didn't sound like some maudlin thing. Th this, was, this was it. The art, the philosophy, everything came together as a kind of practicing way of living one's life. You have to remember that so many of these students have only had experiences where they were reminded of failure, where they were reminded that they weren't talented, that they wouldn't go anywhere, that they would go back into drugs. And with these works of literature, philosophy, writing, they actually discovered that they could be something else. Many of our students have done extraordinary things. Some of them are journalists 
journalists, some of them are, um, uh, you know, uh, do government work, so some of them are teachers. One of my Clemente students actually created a Clemente type class um, in New York City for science. So, so it, it's just, I, I guess, if you tell people that they're worth something, if you take them away from the solitude of failure, or the, the solitude of the urban space where you have nowhere to go, where you don't really make new friends, and your new friends, you sit around with your new friends talking about Virginia Woolf and W.E.B. Du Bois, it's really, really remarkable. And I just want to say that at, at Bard College, um, the belief is that, you know, as Andy was saying, as many of you are saying, humanities are not going to come on it, th their own to people who are underprivileged. We have to get it to them. And, and Bard has this remarkable program, and one of its representatives, Stephen Tremaine, is right here in the audience, which is that we look for ways to bring education to to people who don't have access to it. And Bard has a remarkable um, program, which um, high school is called um, Bard Early, um, sorry, what, what's the, the, the that's right, early college, Bard Early College, uh, and it, it, it is amazing. In, in, tell us, Stephen, all the different places it's at. All right? It's, Yeah, uh, and and this this these schools are amazing. These schools, as you were telling me the other day, they don't take people. How many minutes? Should I start? Okay, one more minute. These schools don't accept people because of their performance, because of their expertise, but because of their desire to be in a situation where they can learn and all. Everyone wants to learn. Once you get the right teachers, the right text, there are no people who will not want to learn. And I just want to end saying that I'm so grateful again to all of you who believe in, in the humanities, because I was saved by the humanities. I got kicked out of three schools until I discovered Dostoevsky, and then I thought, OK, I should get my act together. But really, um, <laughs> literature and philosophy, is, it, the, the, that is our oxygen. And let's remember that. So thank you. <laughs>